Hi everyone, Lewis here and today I'm going to be making a quick install video for the Invasion 1944 mod to work alongside the Wasteland mod for Armour 2. This is also going to be covering pretty much every mod out there for Armour 2, such as GSRS, DZ, you can install any mod using this guide, but in specific I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to install the Invasion 1944 mod, like I said, to work alongside the Wasteland mod for Armour 2. So anyway, you'll need three different downloads to make this work. The first thing you need to do, of course, is make sure that you are using the latest beta patch for Armour 2. Just go on this website, there'll be a link to it in the description below. Click on this link right here and it will download the file. Then just go to where you downloaded that file and double click it and it should open up in WinRAR, WinZip, anything like that. If you don't already have an extracting program, just download one. Like I said, WinRAR or WinZip work perfectly fine. I'm using WinRAR. And then just double click on the XE. Once you've done that, click yes and you'll see a short install process, just click yes again and then finally you'll see this window right here and just click on OK. Once you've done that, you want to go to where your Armour 2 is actually installed. In my case, it's in a really weird directory, but in your case, it'll be somewhere else. Just make sure you know where your actual Armour 2 is installed and go to there. So it's in here for me. I will actually link the full path, at least the default path in the description below. So if you haven't changed any paths while installing, Armour 2 or installing it on Steam at least, you will have the link right there in the description. So once you're there, just open up expansion, open up beta, copy armor2oa.exe, go back two times into the root folder and paste it in there, then click on copy and replace. Once you've done that, you're pretty much done entirely for installing the beta patch. So the next thing you want to download is the 6 up data which is not necessarily the only way to install mods, but it's one of the easier ways since you can update really easily, you can see the different versions of the mods really easily. It's just very easy to download a lot of different mods for Armour 2. So just go again to the description below and download this. And in this case, you can see I've actually downloaded it right here. Again, it's in the same place. And also download the other link, which is in the description below, which is CBA. Raw. So the next thing we want to install is 6 Data. So just double click on 6 Data and install that program. Again, I'll have some more pop-ups. It won't really take too long. It'll take a bit longer than installing the beta patch. It's somewhere down here. There it is. Right, so there you go. You can see it's extracting. Click on next and I accept and put your name in there. It doesn't really matter. You can leave this as default, but in my case, I'm going to change the actual path. But if you don't care about where the path is, just leave it default. It does not matter whatsoever. Click on next, click on install, and you should see install. So once it's actually installed, you want to make sure it updates. If it doesn't update, I don't really know what's going to go wrong. There's no harm in letting it update itself just so there's less bugs, all that kind of stuff. So there we go. So I'm going to untick that because I'm not actually sure which six update, well, which six program it actually installs. If you type six into start, which is the next step, you'll see you've got six update and six launcher. You want to make sure you're actually opening six update, not six launcher. And you'll see right there. It's installing the patch at the speed of light, so there we go, I'll just let it patch quickly. Right, so once it's all patched, just press start again, type 6 again, and open up 6 up data, and you should see now there shouldn't be any patching screen, and it should load up the actual program. So you'll have two pop-ups when you first load up a program. The first one is going to ask you whether or not you want to enable multiplayer. I haven't actually had any problems when enabling it, so it's only single player, but you may as well click yes, just in case. I'm not really sure what it does. But either way, it does work. But I'd recommend clicking yes for that. And the second thing you're going to have is a pop-up asking you to do a ping test to see which servers are going to be the fastest for you. So just click yes for that. And it will quickly do a speed test on all the different servers which 6 Data uses and find out which servers are the fastest for you, like I said. So I'll be back in a second once all that is done. Just let it do all that stuff. You can't click on anything right now, otherwise it won't work. So just let it do all the stuff it needs to do. You'll see this bar at the bottom while it is doing a speed test. Just wait until this little bar down here is gone. So I'll be back in just a second. All right, so there we go. You can see the black bar at the bottom is now gone. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is right click over here and click on new preset. And then right click on the preset and rename it. This doesn't matter that much because I'm not actually gonna show you guys how to launch a game through 6 Data, but I just like to do it just to keep things nice and neat and so you know what each of the presets do in case you do choose to launch it through 6 Data. So just rename it to whatever you want. In my case, I'm gonna just rename it to I-44 for Invasion 1944. And once you've done that, you'll see right here, you want to go into the mods tab and you want to basically just put in the mods which you want to download. In this case, I'm going to show you guys how to install Invasion 1944 as well as JSRS. So I'm just going to type at I44, right click on that and then click on add to preset and you'll see it'll go over here. It will also bring this little add-on over here. This doesn't matter, just completely ignore it. I don't want to go into details because it'll make things confusing, but basically you can't get rid of it. So just deal with it. Uh, next thing you want to do is type at JSRS. If you are, of course, installing JSRS, right click on that and click on add to preset. 
Once you've done that, you can see all the stuff is in the preset. So then you just need to click on Run Updater right here, and it will then download all the things in the preset, which in my case are three different programs. Well, three different add-ons, so there will be three different pop-ups which ask me to accept the terms of service. So just click on Accept on all those. And you'll then see this new tab will pop up, which will show you all the downloads for the add-ons. So we'll go through them from the top to the bottom, and you can see right now that speed is not accurate. 17 megabytes a second, I don't know. It's not exactly most accurate program ever but it will do a job at least it's downloading the add-on so you'll see this will take quite a while depending on the size of add-on it could take longer i44 is massive it's three gigabytes so um just wait a while and eventually it will install but as if by magic i'm going to be showing you guys what it should look like once it is fully installed Right, so once it's installed, you'll see all of the add-ons in your actual preset will be green beside them. The green means that it's just fully installed. If you click on it and actually go on the mods tab, then click on it, you'll see that it's skip beside it because the program knows that it's fully installed. So just make sure that everything you want to install, it doesn't necessarily have to be these, it could be any mod whatsoever, has the green beside it. That means it's fully installed. And once that's done, just press the X on the program. We're not going to be using that again because I'm not going to be showing you guys how to launch through 6 update, but rather launching it straight through the actual directory which you installed game at. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and open up cba.raw. So CBA stands for Community Based Add-ons and you need these for a lot of the big add-ons to name a few which I know of, Invasion 1944 which I'm showing you guys how to install right now and also JSRS. You also need these for JSRS to actually work. To be honest I don't know what they do but it won't work without them. That's all I know and lots of different add-ons do use them. Daisy doesn't but I don't know all of add-ons but lots of them do basically. So it's nice to install these and since you do need them for invasion, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it. It's pretty easy. Just go back to where your game install was. In my case, again, it's in games, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Operation, Armor 2, Operation Arrowhead even. And then you just want to drag and drop all these folders into here. And there we go. It really is that simple. So we'll just close all that stuff and we don't actually need to do anything else now. All you need to do is open up Steam, go to your library or just launch it through the desktop. But I'm sure most of you guys have probably got the game through Steam. Just open the game and I'll show you guys how to configure the expansions to make it work for the server of your choice. So I'll be back in a second once the game is fully loaded. Right, so once you launch the game it should look the same as it always has and then just click on expansions and you'll see a few things which might not have been there before. So for Invasion 1944 what you want to enable is the actual Invasion 1944 mod, you want to enable CBA, you want to enable CBA A2 and finally CBA OA. Then once you've done that just click on OK and OK again. It does vary on the add-on as to what you actually need to enable for some add-ons like I said such as DayZ you don't actually need to enable CBA and if you do you might get an error. So just google whatever you need for your launch options and just go into expansions and eventually figure it around with those you should hopefully find some kind of setup which allows you to get on the server of your choice. I'm quickly going to show you guys the setup which you need to use GSRS as well. So there's no server from what I know that uses 1944, well Invasion 1944 and GSRS just because they're not compatible. Um, so obviously you wouldn't have this and this enabled at the same, no, this and this, there it is. JSRS enabled at the same time because it would not work together, but instead you'd have Invasion 1944 down here disabled and you'd have JSRS up here enabled. So to make JSRS work you just need this, this, this and this and then that'll work fine as well, but you can't have them together otherwise you will have some issues when joining a server, but it doesn't really take that long to just for start. So there we go, that's all good, it is actually fine that way, it's just because I did quickly change that. So you'll see the main menu and everything is now using the Invasion 1944 theme and that is literally it. Like I said, just Google what your actual add-ons need enabled. You might need some other sub add-ons to make them work and it should work perfectly fine. So if you did find the video useful or informative, then please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe and all that good stuff. If you have any issues, then feel free to leave it in the comment section below or PM me and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. There'll also be a step-by-step -step guide in the description below if you did get stuck at any point. Of course, all the downloads are in the description below. The file paths for all the file path involving things are in the description below. So hopefully that will suffice for the guide. So like I said, this will work for pretty much any add-on. It just varies on what exactly the add-on might need. You might need to enable multiple add-ons or in some cases, such as just DayZ, for example, you only need to actually enable DayZ. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next time.